go on the road with me. I am Mr. Pickle, let's sweet and grow. I am Mr. Pickle, get on the bus with me. I am Mr. Pickle, all right, everybody, that's the show. I am Mr. Pickle, get in. Reading and rhyming, dancing and climbing, swinging and swaying on that fun blue swing. Reading and rhyming, dancing and climbing, let's all explore on the Mr. Pickles bus. Yes, I, I, Mr. Pickles, go on the road with me. I, I, Mr. Pickles, let's read and grow. I, I, Mr. Pickles, get on the bus with me. Mr. Pickles here at the Shabahang and Sons Gallery of Fine Rugs in Waukesha. Well, let's see who's inside. Hi, Mr. Pickles. Well, here's my good friend. It's great Br to see you, Mr. Pickles. Are you Bruce Shabahang? Yes, I am. Oh, my yes. goodness. It's really great to see you. Like, it's a pleasure. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, thanks for letting Mr. Pickles and his friends visit your wonderful Oriental and Persian rug store You're very right welcome. here in Waukesha. Yes, I'm thrilled to be in a place filled with so many different types of designs and rugs. Will you take Mr. Pickles and his friends for a tour of Shabahang and Sons? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Well, I think we should do this, but before we get started, oh yes, definitely before we get started, on our wonderful tour, could you give us a little background or history about Shabahang and Sons Gallery of Fine Arts? Of course. Wonderful. We're all looking forward to it. My name is Bruce Shabahang. I'm the owner of Shabahang and Sons. Uh, my family has been doing, uh, has been involved in Oriental rugs, Oriental slash Persian rugs for four generations. Uh, so we know all the ins and outs of the trade. Uh, we have connections all around the world and uh, you know, we uh, buy these rugs direct, and by buying them direct, we really focus on quality, and uh, we uh, we get to buy it for less because we don't get a uh, wholesaler involved, a middleman involved. And uh, when we buy these rugs, we cherry pick, cherry pick them. I mean, we just don't get any rug. Uh, you know, we go through thousands of rugs before choosing uh, two or three or four pieces. And we really, really focus on quality because we just uh, don't get uh, any rug again. We, we have standards that uh, are very, very important for us. And uh, we, uh, we want our customers to get the best of the best. So, uh, so yeah, so this is something that uh, I'm very uh, proud of doing. This is something that I love. This is something that I really, really enjoy. And this is something that uh, I'm really proud of sharing with uh, you know, the uh, Wisconsin community. Mr. Shebehang, so glad to be here. I'm really looking forward to the tour that you're going to take us on these rugs. Now that you've told us all a little bit about it, this is going to be an incredible tour. I can hardly wait. Yeah, it's my pleasure as well. So oh. uh, let's get started. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, can I call you Mr. Bruce? Sure. Oh, that would be that would be great because I'm Mr. Pickles and you're Mr. Bruce. So we're gonna talk about this thing. It looks like balls on here. What well, are these different colored baseballs or what no, are these? No, these are yarns and these are the colors the artist uh, is going to be using for this particular rug. So all the rugs are woven out of a loom, similar to this. The bigger the rug, the bigger the loom. And sometimes the rugs get so big that. Uh, you know, they need these giant looms and the artists have to sit on a ladder to make the knots. And then, uh, you know, they make these rugs knot per knot, row by row, until the whole rug is completed. And every knot is done like a necktie. They go around the foundation, they make a knot similar to a necktie. And, uh, you know, a, a rug like this size, this is a four by six, uh, a rug for in this size, in this quality, you're looking uh, close to four to six months of human labor 
just to weave one of these amazing, amazing rugs. Well, Mr. Pickles immediately has a question. Yes. All of this stuff that's sitting on the top here, what is that? Uh, that's just part of the, uh, the loom, yeah. Oh, I see yeah. these strings right here. Yeah. Are those the, perhaps the, were that? Oh, I see, yeah. that might be part of that string. Yeah. This is interesting, and, and this is looks like a belt or something here. No, what they do is uh, they use these to decorate the, the donkeys or the horses, because, you know, a lot of these people, they live in villages, and uh, they're very similar to Amish people, uh, you know, they, they're farmers, uh, very simple, uh, very naive, very kind people, and uh, the rugs are how they express themselves. Uh, so, you know, they, this is their passion. This is uh, what they love to do. This is their pride. This is, uh, you know, an art that's uh, been going on in their region for thousands of years. So do they reflect some of their life stories into these rugs? Uh, some, of, uh, some of the rugs, yes. And uh, some of them, you know, they just use patterns that they're accustomed to or that they're used to, that they've seen in, in rugs their family have woven. So Okay, so, yeah. okay, I get that. And all of these rugs, and I'm going to pan down here a little bit here, all of these rugs definitely have soft corners, edge corners, mm -hmm. a lot of round detail. corners, lots of detail. It's just really an interesting journey through what someone who's watching this show might even be interested in exploring. Exactly. Wow, imagine yeah. that. Have you ever done this, Mr. Bruce? No, I am just a collector. Uh, I love uh, uh, rugs, obviously. I just love uh, art in general. Oh, well, so, that's such yeah. an artistic thing to yeah. do. My yes. goodness, I'm thrilled for your energy and your interest and Thank your you so excitement. Yeah, this appreciate is, it. We're so glad that you are here. Trust me, who else would do this if it wasn't for somebody like you who genuinely loves this craft? That's well, special. Yeah, and whatever you do, you have to love. So, and again, this is something that I truly have a passion for. Well, that's great. Mr. Bruce... Tell me, what is this more specifically? It looks so interesting. Uh, that's a saddlebag, and they weave this for the kids and, and the villages. And uh, the kids use it to put their toys or their food or whatever they want, you know. Wow. And they, uh, you know, use this to carry their stuff around. Incredible. So it opens up from the top, I'm it assuming, does. right? It does, yeah. Yes. Wow. That is so, so yeah, it's a, cool. It's a really neat piece. And I love the, the tassels on yeah. the bottom. Yeah, you know, it just makes it more decorative. This particular rug is a tribal rug, and a tribal rug are woven in the countryside, and uh, these rugs are woven without a blueprint. So each one is a true, unique, one-of-a-kind piece. So, Mr. Bruce, what's a blueprint? A blueprint the, is a the graph. the kids out there might not know what a blueprint is. It's a graph, and it gives the artist, like, a walks them through on how to weave the rug. Oh, uh, but, but this one doesn't this have one, it. No, this one is just, uh, the artists have this image in their heart, in their mind, and, you know, they bring that image to, to reality. And wow. they start from the bottom, and, you know, they, uh, they create their, their image. And uh, this particular rug is all vegetable dyed, and as you can see, there's different variation and the color. And the reason for that is, is because vegetable dyes are very soft. And as you can imagine, not all the wool on this rug has come from one sheep. It's come from different patches of sheep. And every patch of sheep, uh, you know, uh, every patch of wool, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I should right. say that. No, every patch gotta, of wool, yeah, yeah, that absorbs the dye differently. And oh. so that's why you see the different variations throughout the rug. That term and rug term is called abrush. And uh, many people who buy tribal rugs, uh, you know, are really um, intrigued by the abrush. They love that look. They look for that look. And, you know, and... Uh, the variation. Yeah, the variations, yeah. yeah. So red is not red. Red can be a whole bunch of different yeah. reds. Yeah, and then it's, uh, it makes it a li little bit easier to, uh, to match the colors. Right, this is really intriguing.
Yeah. Now, myself being a musician and also a jazz musician, you could perhaps call this a jazz piece of art. Uh, You're just definitely creating off the top of your heart yes. and spirit and mind and whatever yeah. notes fly out and here it's the art. I'm sure there's meaningful stories and symbolism. So there's symbolism here with the trees. Yeah, the tree of life. That's a very uh, popular concept. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, rods. Uh, you have the goats. Oh, yeah. there you go. Here. The goats. Yes. Yeah. You have uh, tulips. So uh, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of symbols, and then you know every artist has their own version of how how to weave the rug, obviously. Well, Mr. Bruce, I noticed this one here while I was journeying through your wonderful store, and I noticed the complexity and the fine fine tooling or craftsmanship here. So tell me a little bit about this one. Well, yeah, this is a city rug, like uh, unlike the tribal rug. Uh, the artist in this particular rug had a blueprint to follow. And okay. since they have a, a blueprint to follow, what's very important in valuing the rug is that the rug has to be as close to perfect as possible. Uh, so that's why the design is very symmetrical. I mean, it, it almost looks perfect. And it's uh, very, very finely woven. I mean, this rug, the knots are so fine. I mean, you need almost a magnifying glass just to see the knots. Oh, and that's the back. Yeah, and uh, this one is about 350 knots per square inch. So uh, uh, this is very delicate. It's very fine. It's got silk highlights. Uh, I don't know if uh, they're going to be able to tell. They're shiny? Yeah, the shiny part here on the bird and on the flowers uh, if that, are silk. Yeah, and I'm that's silk. That. Yeah, yeah, the silk gives the rug a three-dimensional look, which obviously, you know, makes the rug look amazing. Wow. As Mr. Bruce is showing us here, here's the top of the rug, and this is the bottom of the rug. It almost looks the same, except for the color is really a lot brighter here than here, because that's the back of the rug, and most rugs have rubber on the back of them, but this rug doesn't, because each little spot, you can see each little knot. And how many knots per... Uh, 350. 350 knots per, per square, square inch. inch. Yeah, really fine. Oh, have you ever tied your shoe? 300 and how many knots? 50. 350 knots in your shoelaces? Oh no! My goodness! So, well now let's drop this rug here. Now we're gonna drop it down. Whoa! And that's the original rug. That is truly, truly amazing. And this, boys and girls, is the signature of the artist. Wow. What language is that? That's Farsi. That's the language of Farsi. Yeah, Can any of you kids read that? It's an ancient uh, language. Very ancient language. Mm -hmm. Wow. This rug is so special, he put his name on it. Yeah. Absolutely. This was a special piece of homework. This was a special piece of homework, and how long did you tell us it took? Uh, this rug, uh, two years. Two years of yeah. hard, concentrated labor. Yep. This has been a very memorable, visually exciting, and educational visit. I can't thank you enough for allowing Mr. Pickles and his friends to visit Shabahang and Sons Gallery of Fine Rugs. Visiting you has been a real treat. Your store and you provide inspiration for kids to aspire to be creative and to do something with their hands, their heart, and their mind. I, Mr. Pickles, am really glad to know you. I'm very glad to know you as well. Oh, what a slice of heaven. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now let's say goodbye to the kids. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Kids. Thank Bye. you. All right. We'll Bye. See you. We'll see you again.
Mr. Pickles, but yes, I, I, Mr. 